Back-to-back -back years with the first pick overall is never something to be super proud of, but at least in this case, the Chicago Bears didn't actually earn that pick through being the worst team in the league. They actually did kind of the opposite. They had a really strong finish to the season, and that's usually not what Chicago does. Usually they're, they're okay in the beginning, and then they just finish absolutely terribly but they actually finished as one of the stronger teams in the league especially on defense surprisingly enough I know they fired their DC uh, middle of the year but at the same time it really does just feel like there isn't a whole lot of talent on this D-line Montez Sweat not really getting the credit he deserves as I mean you look at the defensive front and is there really anyone else you want to double or triple team than him I don't really think so. Jalen Johnson obviously had himself a pretty damn good year, and, and some of the new names in general actually played pretty well for them. And, you know, on offense, it's hard to say with Justin Fields uh, because at one you know time, I want to say, you know, doesn't seem like he can read the field well. But at the other side, while we know they have decent receivers, the scheme is just not allowing them to thrive. It seems like, yes, maybe they don't trust Fields for good reason. Maybe he isn't the franchise quarterback, but everything is super short. No separation, really, and it's just... I don't know. It just seems like an easy offense to figure out, and obviously it doesn't help with an offensive line that really hasn't played well. I think Dar uh, Darnell Wright uh, deserves a little bit more credit than a 75 overall, but okay, yay, whatever. Uh, this is the Week 10 roster, in fairness, so some of the overalls are a little bit higher than this, but at the same time, you know, we're going to see our upgrades go when we finish the rest of this sim, so it'll equal out anyways. Uh, but obviously, DJ Moore has been great, and, you know, they have a couple of decent players, but even with guys like Mooney still potentially being good, you know, the following season, I think if there's a chance at Marvin Harrison Jr., which... At pick one overall, you can literally choose him. Do you really have much of a choice? I don't know. I, I think Chicago needs an offensive lineman as well. I think if they maneuver this correctly and they kind of get their their scouting correct, as in the scouting of the other teams, like, hey, these other two teams are taking quarterback, could they get to pick three and still land Marvin Harrison? I don't know. We'll see. Um, but obviously the team needs a little bit of work, but... Once again, a team that finished out pretty strongly and is not as screwed as they kind of felt middle of the season. And if you really want to see a Chicago Bears rebuild done right, take a look at our Chicago Bears online user franchise where we're kind of killing it and also we uh, have a really good roster right now. Uh, a lot of the original Bears players there too. It's not like we really replaced many guys like the original starting four receivers. You know, Fields is still there, obviously. The whole line is, I think, even fully intact I might have replaced one or two with some rookies but yeah go take a look at that and obviously have to change this uh this roster but also if you guys enjoy franchise stuff rebuilds maybe you'll like sticking around here maybe subscribe maybe leave a like if you enjoy the video but it's a little early for that so there's that let's get on to this one see if we can turn this team into a Super Bowl champion, or at least get this team back to the playoffs pending free agents Jalen Johnson and Darnell Mooney are here Gotta say, Darnell Mooney kind of seems like he might be on his way out. Of course, Jalen Johnson, uh, this almost has Kyle Fuller written all over it. I want to say yes, but but why? But, but give us like a reason why. Like, but but no, but for what? It's over $100 million. Just Just take the deal. It's pretty simple. Uh, Justin Fields, I know that they've been kind of mulling over a fifth-year option or not. I think it's almost guaranteed that they give him the fifth-year option, whether they're completely sold on a new quarterback or not. I think they're going to give him the fifth-year option just to have that option. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think we're going to be letting Mooney go and probably draft in wide receiver. Because, to be honest, Mooney should be lower than that. He's actually a 77 overall in the normal roster. So, yeah, 77 overall, 25-year-old, that needs to be replaced. That is a uh, that is a no-no. Thank you, Jalen Johnson. A lot of money, but very high overall. EA has the Cowboys and the Bills facing off in the Super Bowl with the Cowboys winning it all, I mean, I could see it. The Cowboys are actually a pretty strong team right now. I don't know if my team, the Green Bay Packers, are going to uh, be able to beat Dallas at home. I think that would be Dallas's first loss at home, right? I mean, other than maybe like preseason, which who really cares? But uh, it's a tough task. I mean, we'll see. Uh, I'm just kind of shocked and proud that they're even in it. As nobody gave him a chance. I mean, nobody. I was kind of seeing seven to nine wins, but seven to nine wins without a playoff spot, but things worked out. And Sweat, the man who, if I'm, you know, still correct, I believe 
led two separate teams with sacks and like earned sacks. It's not like, you know, he had 13 sacks total and, oh, well, because 13 is higher than any of them. No, I'm pretty sure he led each team while he was on them in sacks. Like, that's it's kind of absurd. Uh, any other dev ups? I don't believe, right? Uh, Edwards actually maybe went up in dev. I thought he was normal to start. Was he? Maybe not. Oh, well. Oh, well, in a good way, of course. We we appreciate this oh, well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's uh, see what kind of retirements. Actually, we don't really have any retirements. We're not a very good team. We're not a very old team. We're a team that needs this draft pick, these draft picks in the first round to count. I mean, I might even pull a Texans, but make it both offense. I mean, do I do I grab quarterback? You know, this is a rebuild after all, and as much as I think... I don't know. I really don't know if they should move on from Justin Fields or not. Like, I really thought before the season started that the Bears were going to be special this year. I really did. I thought maybe their defense was going to kind of suck, but their offense was going to come together... That didn't really happen, and I mean, maybe they just need a whole brand new scheme on offense, but going to be giving Fields the fifth-year options, or so I have options, just like I said, I think they should do in real life, whether they're completely like, okay, we got to get rid of this guy right now, or not, I think it's the smart thing to do, you know, get rid of a guy that has potential without a guarantee replacement, I mean, not that there really will be any guarantees at that position, but you kind of get my drift. Uh, some decent players here, but uh, unless we're going to go Pittman, which we could, I don't think we're going to spend money. Pittman would be an interesting name. I don't see the Colts getting rid of him, but he's not like, you know, a Tyreek Hill or something where, like, you can't get rid of him. Like, you'd be such an idiot. Like, it's like, I kind of get it, maybe. I don't know, though. I, re I really don't know. Pittman is... He's not really a guy that's developed for me in rebuilds too much. You can see here another, you know, as the number one even, where Mooney or uh, DJ Moore is our number one. You know, he didn't even get to a thousand yards. It's like, eh, I don't know. But I, I want Marvin Harrison. But at the same time, I'm I'm starting to kind of grow on quarterback a little bit. Well, this thing is now more interesting than before because it should be Washington at two and not Arizona. This is a lot different because. Pick two very well could be Marvin Harrison Jr. rather than a quarterback, and I don't know if I can make that trade. Trading out two or three would make a lot of sense. Guarantee that no one steals their quarterback at two or one, whatever, you know. If, uh, you know, the commanders really want Caleb Williams, they might have to make that trade up. And because we don't want to risk Marvin Harrison Jr., maybe we give him a little bit more of a deal because, you know, we're like, okay, we're helping each other out here. You know, we're guaranteeing you get your quarterback. You're guaranteeing we get our wide receiver. But we still want something, you know? So I might have to... I don't even know what I got to do here. Because it should... You know, I, I did the right scheduling and force wins and whatnot. It should be the commanders, but it's not. The commanders much more likely to take QB than a wide receiver. We do the crazy trade. We trade pick one and a third round pick for pick two. And two second round draft picks... We are praying they take quarterback. Please just take quarterback, dude. Yes, Caleb Williams, one over one. All oh, we get two second round draft picks and Marvin Harrison Jr. Can you ask for anything better? Welcome to the squad. Uh, 92 speed? Is he not faster than that? I feel like he's been like blazing fast. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. He's got to be a high overall. He's him. And... The Bears have the best receiving group in the league by a considerable margin. And I know there's going to be some fans, like the Eagles fans and this and that, but I don't care. I don't care. Uh, still could trade up to... No, you can't because the Patriots are taking quarterback. What? I mean, that's just not going to happen. So the, the realism is out the window with that. Uh, the Titans probably will take QB. Anyone take QB? No? Okay. Maze all the way down to... To pick nine, Brock Bowers to the uh, the Jets would be very interesting. Tight end's not a position that they're, like, completely sold on, uh, you know. Of course, I just don't think May would be there, right? So, Joe Alts could go left tackle, could try to go franchise here. Do we say that's who we want to go? I didn't have him on my list as a, as a player. I was like, you know what, I think we can go other, uh, you know, routes see what we got, though. Let's let's just see what we're cooking with. Wide receiver, obviously, not a need anymore. 
Uh, and a lot of wide receivers just in case it didn't go our way. Uh, Sawyer, any other one to twos? Trice, I think, might be a good guy. So let's go to like 20 maybe and then grab Edge and be like, hey, our Edge is halfway decent. But I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to like 20, 22. kind of depends on who's there. Uh, but we're going to go to that spot. I go, let's go 22, and then if we have to, we'll trade up. I don't know if this is... Nah, this can't be our best option. Or do we, like, kind of take a step back and say, you know what? Give us a draft pick next year instead. That might be the better option. I think I'm going to go with the Niners draft pick here. 27 is a little late. But if, uh, you know, all of our edge rushers go, we can always trade up. But uh, I think that's smart. You know, the Bears have been kind of... Uh, oh, they, they made a play, though. You gotta give them credit. They kind of made a play. But, uh, you know, we, uh, as this Bears team, have been blessed with future picks. Gonna keep that uh, train rolling here. Niners maybe have a huge drop-off. Definitely not gonna be as good of a, a draft pick as this team is used to, but still, it seems like it might be worth it, and uh, that's the move we make. Looking pretty damn good so far for this edge position. I mean, there's still no edge gone. I mean, we have options. Okay, so Braswell was one of my guys, but I think Trice is still there, which is insane. Kool-Aid McKinstry. I mean, we don't really need corner that bad, but I also don't think he would be there at this point. I mean, a lot of time is between now and the draft, but uh, yeah, he's kind of considered a, uh, a top 15 type pick. Believe it or not, we are not uh, at top 15 right now. There's some really good corners, though. Do you really believe? How old is... Man, I don't know. Stevenson is like 24, isn't he? He's 24 and he is... I mean, he's star dev. Man, I don't know. I could always go with Isaac as well. I think I need to go corner here. DT's a big problem too and O-line and whatnot. But I think this pick makes the most sense as a corner who I didn't even really have scouted... Do I just get a little greedy for once and just, just take the guy that's, you know, maybe an injury happened before the draft? I don't know. Do I make that argument? I'm doing it. I don't care. I've never had him. I, I want a new player. It is not my job to draft for the other teams, okay? I passed on the quarterback, and it was unrealistic for him to be there at nine, so, you know, don't sue me. What can I say? Trice is gone. I think Isaac will be there a little bit longer. Sawyer... I thought he was the DT type. He is not. There's a couple of DTs here. Uh, I think we're chilling. I think we're going to chill to like 15. I lied. The Browns cooked me up a nice trade. All right. Adisa Isaac. Decently fast. Very good power move. Good tackle. Please be hidden. Of course he's not. We're going to 79 now uh, for, with the Broncos to get a fourth round pick. I think that's what this Bears team needs to do. They need to do a ton of trading down. You know, if you're really sold on Marvin, I guess I pick one, I suppose. But at the same time, I mean, you can get a lot for some trade downs. You could get some lot, a lot for those trade downs. But, you know, it just depends on what they see. Uh, Zinter, was that on my... I know he was on my list, but he was, was he one of the guys that I actually really wanted? I think it was a left guard, actually. And I was a right guard. It was Haynes. Kind of want to go with Haynes. There's some question marks there, but a B awareness, B pass block. We need pass blockers on this team. We are really lacking here, though, with depth. I might go Jack Nelson. I think I trade up here. We only need two DTs. Debatably one if uh, Jervon Wa um, Dexter can make a, a step. But, uh, yeah, I think we should trade up to the Jets here. I ended up trading Tyreek Stevenson off for a third-round pick. I wanted to get to this Jets pick, but the Jets really weren't interested, so... I end up having to just do what I could to get some value. I mean, we just don't need him. Kyler Gordon uh, is perfectly fine to play number three. I haven't done that. You know, normally I keep uh, the young players around, but 24 years old, 73 overall, he's not going to develop much with us, but I figured if I trade him off now, maybe I'll get something off of him and uh, be able, there's no way this trade even goes, but be able to, to recoup some since he's just no longer the starter. So a three, four, uh, five, four, well, a three, a higher three, Kept 15 because I kind of want some DTs, maybe another offensive lineman. I do worry that Haynes is going to be gone, but I think this is going to be Nelson. I do worry, though, because uh, this uh, draft class, Bengals draft class, it's pretty tame on the devs of Hidden, which I really felt like, honestly, EA did a little bit too much with the devs. Seems like almost every player seems to be Hidden in the CPU classes, so 
I don't necessarily hate it. It's just, you know, I kind of have to tread carefully because, especially with offensive linemen, if they're normal, they're, they're kind of wasteful. But I'm going to be going for a new player, Jack Nelson. And as I feared, moving on to 15, I mean, if I lose a player, I lose a player. I don't really care too much. As there's a lot of talent here. I'd have to be really unlucky for all of my players to go. As you can see here, we got a couple of DTs still. Don't know a whole lot about these guys, but Corleone, or Corleone, who I almost always forget to grab, is still there. So that might be somebody I go with. Day three, though. Maybe my players did go. Maybe I maybe I did kind of sell. Um, Jackson's really the only guy I know about here. Smith, I think we've had before, and he just wasn't good. Like, he was normal dev as well, and he just never developed. Do I go with a new name, Jackson? I mean, he looks so raw. Good. So I'm going to go McKinley Jackson. Normal dev. I guess I next pick, if he's there, grab Corleone. And I don't know. Might call it a draft. I mean, things did kind of fizzle out here a little bit. Right? I mean, the old line's kind of weak. BB, maybe. I can't remember if he was in or not. But let's go with Corleone. And then a lineman with our next pick. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much all normal linemen, so... Kind of feel like in the, the user class, you might just want to hold off on O-line unless you're grabbing someone in the first round. Oh, BB goes one pick before us. Of course he does. Of course he does. Uh, what do we got? Still got some wide receivers. Could go with another DT. Edge wouldn't hurt. Birch is a different type of uh, DT, and I didn't get to scout Carter fully, but as a finesse guy, you know, with that speed, I'm going to grab him. Why not? Normal dev, low strength. That's why. Uh, Birch is still there. Why the hell not? Jordan Birch, the big guy. 89 strength, 3, 180 pounds. And we got a lot of DTI talent. Hopefully one of them hits. And, uh, with this pick, I think we go with the edge rusher and then possibly trade down the rest. Jalen Green, we know he's halfway decent. We've developed him before. 87 speed, 86 excel. We could have done more for the actual, like, off-ball linebacker position, but... It's not the worst position in the world. Maybe not the best developing, but we've got some okay overalls there. But we also probably, I don't know why I just completely forgot about running back. I really should have scouted some running backs. Brooks, he's slow as hell. Good trucking, though. Yeah, I should have went for a running back, bro. Why didn't I scout them? Especially since we had no one in the third, like late third, early fourth. We kind of like ran out of talent. Uh, who the hell is this? Didn't we? I think we scouted this guy once, no? I mean, he's slow as hell, but he's got a bunch of A's. I'm taking Carson Steele. 87 speed, 87 excel, 88 agility. Um, I mean, sure. We got some wide receivers, uh, Blankum C. I, I don't know, I don't feel like we've ever had him. He's decently fast, though. So, 93 speed, 94 excel. Add some wide receiver depth. It wasn't the best draft, but... We did land an extra draft pick for next year. First round draft pick. And we did land a couple of hiddens, right? We landed two. I mean, our first round was really good, right? Adding extra talent and just grabbing great players. Um, the rest, like, all normal. Bunch of DTs, bunch of trench stuff. O-line didn't really do much for, but that's all normal. Whereas, the D, I mean, the DTs can at least develop. Uh, 82 overall for Marvin Harrison Jr., who is a monster. I mean, he's... Look at that. I mean, look at that. Like, what do you do? It should be X-Factor, right? So, uh, there's that. Let's see it. Let's see it. Boom! And then let's uh, look at Kool-Aid McKinstry. Decently, uh, you know, fast. Good man in zone. Obviously starting, so we'll take a look at his dev. Star dev. You know, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Isaac, obviously a, a starter no matter what. Please be decent. 78 power move, okay. 71 block shot. I can live with it. I can absolutely live with it. Could be set on the D-line, but it's going to take a little bit of work. And then for these DTs, we're going to have to look at who is the best across the board. They're all kind of low strength, to be fair. What about, like, Blackshed, all that stuff? So Blackshed, uh, Corleone kind of looks like the best of the bunch. Corleone's definitely a starter, and Birch is the wrong scheme, but he's, like, the second best. Interesting. Our latest, well, actually, Corleone went a little bit higher than that. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Running back, what about Steele? Does he have any chance to be a starter? Oh, he's got good trucking, though. We basically just got another Roshan Johnson, which I don't really know the point of. Here we are for 
Well, technically season one, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., a guy that I would say a lot of Bears fans are hoping the Bears take, even pick one overall. But to land two second-round picks with him, I think would be an ultra win. Of course, did not do as much for the offensive line as we're supposed to, but, you know, that's kind of the Bears thing to do these days is let's hope the quarterback finds a way. Uh, Looking at the defense, obviously not the best here either, but youth, which equals potential. And uh, we're just hoping for one, maybe two dev ups on the D-line. And as much as I kind of talked up uh, Jervon Dexter, he's actually really low. Kind of mixing him up with our Jervon Dexter from our online franchise, who I'm wasting him there as well. But uh, he has like 77 power move, 79 block shed. That's a much easier player to use than a 68 power move, 76 block shed player. We are not having a good season, let me tell you that much. Tevin Jenkins, he's actually, uh, you know, the highest offensive lineman on this team. So uh, we're going to try to keep him around. Four-year 50. Sounds good to me. 50 mil left, which is great. Eddie Jackson, I have uh, seen this man stick around for a while. So I'm going to do a one-year 7.5. Okay, maybe maybe needs a little bit more than that. But that's, that's fine. We should be able to do that. Sanborn... I don't know. We'll we'll find out. Uh, and where the hell is Fields? Do we not have to pay him? Hello? Of course, I don't think I will be, but I thought we would have had to. This was a very disappointing season. Not only did we go 5-12, and 12, glad we won that last game there, but Fields was terrible, and we had one breakout the entire year, and it was for Brisker, who did not complete it, of course, because you didn't see it. None of the D-line. We have three normal devs on the D-line. None of them got a breakout. That is harmful. Yards, pretty decent. Field such on a pick ratio, terrible. Herbert wasn't very good. Marvin Harrison, you know, carried Cole Komet. Maybe a dev up with the yards. Uh, blocking was pretty bad. I mean, it was just a disaster as a whole. The pass rush was bad. Picks were okay. Uh, apparently, our punter was the kicker. I don't even know what to say about that. Award wins probably don't matter because even if we win best wide receiver or rookie of the year, whatever, which we didn't, it doesn't matter. He's already such a high overall and his dev is max. So maybe we should have went with Caleb Williams. I think it was more of a real life thing that made me not want to go for him. I, like, I'm not saying he's entitled because like he should be going for his money and do all that. But like this whole not even in the league yet and already talking about wanting percentage of the team he goes to and... He's going to stick, you know, go back to college if, you know, one of the teams he doesn't want is selecting one overall. Whatever it is, it's like, I don't know if that's really good for a franchise, like, you know, for a team that needs a, a quarterback to be the leader. It, it does spell out selfishness, which, once again, I think is correct. I mean, we've seen how many times a really bad team gets the quarterback, one overall, and completely ruins them. I'm not saying he's not wrong. But you also have to think about the other side. Is that what's best for the team? I don't know. I think Fields is a little bit better of a team guy, personally. So that's why we stuck it out with the Fields. But we'll say now, we're probably going to look for a new quarterback. Got to say it. Uh, Isaac and Carter do go up in dev, despite the fact that they did not have a single breakout uh, scenario. And in general, we're pretty mid. But hey, whatever gets a star dev is what gets a star dev. Edge seemingly not a problem at this current juncture and that's fine by me obviously i'm i'm happy with it uh we'll see what other kind of re-signings we got to do i don't think i finished did i finish the tevin jenkins contract i might have forgot to do that i might have forgot to finish the contract which would be a little bit of an l because it's probably gonna cost us more now or maybe i did now i think that i did I, i'm pretty sure i actually did yeah, we did. Okay, uh, we did not finish the Eddie Jackson one, though, which, to be fair, is the same price anyway. So, uh, waiting actually paid off there, but he did regress quite a bit. Uh, Sanborn, I think we can do better. You know, we have an extra first-round draft pick. I know we're probably going to use a draft pick on a quarterback, but, uh, you know, we have extra picks that we normally wouldn't have, and we should have our second round this year, this time around, and... We have a little bit of free agent money, and maybe there's a free agent that can help us out. So I think we can replace some of these guys. Nick Chubb would be a great running back, but a one-year deal kind of guy. Two-year deal, maybe. I don't know. Is that really worth it? Derek Brown's great, but he's a little too costly, I think. I don't know, maybe Nick Chubb is worth it. Really help out, you know, whatever quarterback we get here. Nick Chubb. I could see him going to free agencies. Teams are 
a little iffy on paying their guys, especially when they're like literally that late into their career. Jared Goff, I don't know why Detroit would ever let him go. Jordan Love at this point could even see 40 per in the offseason for all we know. Um, wide receiver we don't need. O-line we need, but I think we should save money, especially since we're still trying to develop the squad. DT we definitely could use, but, you know, no real potential here. Derek Brown would be great, but he's expensive and low interest to us. Khalil Mack coming back, that would be interesting for depth. Um, Baker maybe as a one-year guy, but I don't think you're going to get him on a one-year with all the team interest. But we'll, we'll try, and I don't think we really need corner. Safety, perhaps, but even then, they're all like one-year type guys, which we already have with Eddie, so that's the gist of it. And believe it or not, we got Nick Chubb. It was a very expensive contract, don't get me wrong. A three-year, $63 million deal is a lot of money, uh, but we surprisingly got him, despite the fact that we weren't even the highest team. After I looked, it was the Cardinals that were above us, and then David Long on a one-year nine, which is, you know, great value. All right, here we are headed to the draft. We have pick three overall. There are a few quarterbacks. I scouted the three best, in my opinion, uh, to see what talent grade they were. And apparently, Wilbur... Man, I don't know, dude. Wilbur apparently is the best of the bunch. But look at those ratings. I've, like, had good and bad outcomes of falling for the talent grade. But at the same time... 26-year-old Fields is not improving. If Wilbur's gone before pick three, which I highly doubt he is, but he could be, I just, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I honestly think even if Wilbur is a round one grade, we play this by the teams that need quarterback. There's a lot of quarterbacks here, but, you know, based on these two to three grades, I didn't go Morris because I thought he would have been a pick one, maybe pick two overall, so I don't actually know, but I scouted the other guys who had, uh, you know, similar, if not better, uh, you know, potentials, so uh, you're not kind of sold there. I was really hoping Carey or Paulson would have been him, but uh, apparently not. I think this is a trade down. I really don't think the quarterbacks are worthy. I think, you know, you move back to maybe Green Bay, and you have the Packers and Buccaneers maybe taking QBs, but no guarantees there either. This is a, a debatable trade because we're giving Green Bay a quarterback, but I think they get a quarterback no matter what, and I at least get a third round, a very high third round pick to move back three spots when I don't even want someone that high. They end up going with Morris, who is the highest quarterback on the list, but outside of him being like lucky and dev, I really don't see it. Kerry goes, I mean, now we're kind of down to like you know, if we want that round one grade, we kind of need to take him here. I just don't know if I believe in him. Do I have other players? And I kind of expected to take, uh, you know, one of those players as quarterbacks at pick three, but it didn't really work out that way. So we don't really have many one to twos anyways. Do I take the chance on Carlos Wilbur? Because if he's normal dev, it's just a wasted pick at pick six overall. And it's just a waste. What about, okay, let's see. Fast over the top motion. Vastly, uh, vast majority of his success comes from wall in the pocket. Does well to avoid sacks. Gets happy feet and feels non-existent pressure. Wait, doesn't that mean he's paranoid? Beautiful spiral. That Doesn't that mean he's paranoid, though? Bro, I don't know. Mobley looks just as good, and he's like round one. He's later. I think I moved back again. All right, this feels like an almost scam because our th our draft pick we gained from the Broncos this time is a third next year. But at the same time, I wanted the best value you could get. And on top of it, we don't really need that many draft picks this year. We already have a ton of them. Uh, this is not even going to be a quarterback. Bro, what do I do? I mean, at this point, do I not just take the talent one? I mean, at pick nine, I think it's a little bit more worthy of the risk. Carlos Wilbur. And he is hidden. 93 throw power. Not the fastest guy, but new quarterback, I guess. I, I don't know, man. Like, I don't want to replace Justin Fields, but I feel like we have no choice. And that's why I did it. I, I just feel like we had no choice. And Chambers went at 13. I was like, ah, oh, maybe I'll go to 20. Maybe trade up for Chambers. So we have seen a quarterback, Chambers, who was a 1-2 to two, go all the way to 13. I don't trust anything anymore. All right, we trade a uh, pick 26, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth to the uh, commanders for six spots up, which we're going to be using to grab Meeks, I believe, unless there's some other name there that I just completely forgot about. 
Uh, quarterbacks Mosley, Mobley is still there. Uh, I got a couple of two to three linemen. You know, I don't know if I'm gonna really go for them. I wasted all my scouting, my private scouting on the uh, quarterbacks, so don't really know too much about them. I'm kind of thinking about Apple right now too. I wish I knew more about Meeks because maybe his power move is better than his finesse. Maybe he really sucks at block shed and he's just not good at all. But I think I am gonna be going Meeks here. Just want to make sure. One last glance. I uh, didn't get to scout the safeties too much either, which really sucks because we need a safety going forward. But I think I'm going to go with a higher DT for once because we've been really selling with the DT position, not really getting hit -ins. John Meeks, thank you. I was saying that because it could have still been normal, which would have been really unfortunate. Probably only going to be star, but you never know. I don't usually get superstar DTs unless they're the nose tackle type. So maybe it's the first round that you need to go for it. Uh, Ted Paulson with the Vikings. I mean, it would be crazy to go, oh, quarterback's gone. Mobley might have been actually decent because he went above Paulson. They know things. Uh, Applewhite's not bad either, but we don't really need DT anymore because we have two star pluses with our uh, dev up from last season. Safety, Joey Jeffrey. Two-man coverage safeties. 22 years old, very fast. Versus Luke Stills, who is younger, decently fast as well. I think, hmm, I don't know much about the zone, but I know he's decent in man. Could play corner. Luke Stills. Yes, hidden dev. I really suck at drafting safeties. So getting a hidden dev safety to play for Eddie Jackson in the future, depending on how good of an overall is, maybe right now, is huge. We need some more linemen, so I'm going to be trading this pick down for a late uh, second or early third. The Buccaneers are kind of giving me some here because I'm getting a second round next year. Not quite the first round extra we've been getting most years, but it's still really nice. The Vikings, I'd probably bet against the uh, the, Vic uh, the Buccaneers a little bit more, though. Um, the Jets, maybe, as well. But 74 is... Now we're starting to get a little bit too deep, I think. Uh, that's a first round next year. We could do that, but I think the best bet here is the Buccaneers. Pretty high uh, third... And uh, we, of course, get that second next year, which could literally be a one-to-one -one trade for all we know, right? Like, they could suck again, and we end up getting one-to-one. -one. We're cooking. We get, the you know, that draft pick plus the third that we just got. Uh, pick five, uh, and then six after this pick right here, which is really good. Wiener. He's a wiener. I really like Ferguson, but don't know if I want him. DT wouldn't hurt just to really shore up that position cornerback. I don't know how good he is, but he's 6'5", so I usually throw those guys on the list if I see them. Um, linebacker definitely is a need, but it's not really a good group of linebackers other than, I guess, you know, Patterson is still there. Peterson, anyways, is there. I'm going to take Greg Peterson. And another hidden. I honestly just, like, almost glanced over him, and I was like, you know what? 2-3, to three, get the B block shed. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it, and it was. Seeing a couple of linemen here, I kind of feel like, do I want to be the guy that's going to, like, reach out and grab one of these linemen? I don't know. I actually think Sinclair is even better. I, I went, I glanced over him, too. Weak, but really good key ratings. Yes! Hidden Dev, I got to take a look at this O-line. Do we actually need any more linemen? We could definitely use one more. Um, Yeah, I think we can use one more. I don't want to get rid of Fields because I don't know how good that quarterback is. But uh, we definitely should try to get rid of Fields if the quarterback's legit. If he's a good overall, I might trade Fields off for, like, honestly, a late first from a team that just didn't grab QB. But at the same time, there might just not be a team anymore. So we might have uh, lost our chance entirely. Uh, there's probably other positions we do need, but this center looks great. Ferguson was on my mind. And he's hidden dev. He was 90 strength. Wow, that is rare for a center. I usually don't actually even care about that stuff anymore, but sometimes I'll take a look. This is risky because we could lose everyone, but at the same time, I think I'm chilling. I, I don't know if we really need anyone, honestly. Uh, there's still a lineman. We still have a DT. We still have a linebacker. Dempsey's kind of cooking, though. B zone, B block shed and fast. I'm taking him. And another hidden. Okay, this is a really good draft. This was a really, really good draft. I am happy with it. Plus, we ended up with that second round next year. Might have been even more, perhaps. I, I can't really remember every single pick we ever make or any trade we make. Linebackers are cooking right now. We might not even have starting positions for all of them unless we trade off Edwards. Uh, Cam Henry, he's a pretty good running back, actually. Uh, pretty fast. I think I'm going to trade up for Cam Henry because Chubb is good. 
but he is on the older side. Maybe last two seasons is like a truly elite player, but even then, that's still an extra season. We need another running back, so let's uh, let's trade up for this running back using our fifth round pick this year. I think we might even have an extra pick or two, and uh, call it a draft for the most part. Two fifths. Oh damn, they are like nah, dog. You ain't getting that off us. Roshan Johnson basically trading off Roshan Johnson for a new Roshan Johnson potentially, but a little bit faster. Cam Henry, cool name as well. With Hidden. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we really couldn't lose this draft. I don't think we drafted a single normal. You know, we went for positions, for the most part, that usually do have pretty decent devs, but the safety could have easily been normal. I've drafted many normal dev safeties, even multiple in the same year. But outside of this pick, because, I mean, assuming we draft someone here, this is probably going to be a normal dev. Uh, we landed a full hidden dev draft class, 23 years old. I don't even care, whatever. 89 speed. Just depth. I mean, he had some decent ratings. So I figured if he's an okay overall, maybe he's a decent depth piece and it boosts the overall team up. Maybe not the best call. Didn't really see many uh, slot type speed receivers, so kind of passed on that as well. Uh, a bunch of 74s. So that wide receiver was useless. But uh, a bunch of 74 overalls. Obviously, I have to take a look at Wilbur. <sighs> I'm trying to think of these ratings. So short accuracy is a little iffy. We did draft this guy high, but we have Fields on the team still. I think no matter what the dev is, Fields starts. But if we str uh, struggle again, I'm probably going to bench him. Wilbur, nice superstar dev. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, now you really should start him. But with that being said, you can't go to, you know, really X Factor off of a Rookie of the Year award win. So if anyone actually has the chance to sit, it would be him. But uh, he does wow, look at that power move. Okay, I'm really liking the fact that we went Meeks. That was a good decision, it seems. Uh, I say it seems because he might just never be good. Star Dev, we're number 90. Eh, it is what it is. Kind of run out of numbers. Most Hall of Famers all time. What can you do? Uh, Luke Stills sucks at zone coverage, but uh, he is in Dev. Probably going to be uh, Star Dev. He is a really low overall, but free safety of the future. Star Dev, as expected. He is a pretty iffy player, but... It is what it is. But yeah, Wilbur does have a chance to sit. He should be the QB of the future, though, as a superstar. But I'm not willing to just give up on fields just yet. So uh, we'll give him one more chance. He gets one more opportunity. Uh, and I just realized we have... What's his name? David Long. David Long is a very high overall depth guy. <laughs> what can I say? We need a left guard more than a uh, right guard. So Sinclair goes a left guard. Well, this guy's actually really good. I know his run block sucks, but usually you do, you get like three. It's like all pass block, but he actually has decent run block as well. He's actually a pretty good player. Dev, star, was kind of feeling superstar, but no. Uh, I mean, at this point, we've looked at pretty much everyone, so you might as well take a look at the dev of the center. Uh, future starter center. Uh, well, now starter, but future like plus starter, I suppose. Very athletic, pretty balanced across the board for the most part. Usually, once again, you see those 60, 61s in those ratings. Star Dev. Uh, what else did we have? We had a linebacker who would be playing, I think, right out, actually. Uh, he looks all right. He's not, like, spectacular, but young. So if he can't start because we're like, oh, let's just use uh, Edwards another season, you know, we, we've got someone here. Also, star. We're not really getting those superstars. Thankfully, the one guy we did get superstar was the the quarterback. Of all the positions, that's the one. Cam Henry, hidden dev. Looks really good. Actually, change of direction sucks, but a super power back with decent speed. Almost always going to be star, but you never know. You never know. Well, you do. <laughs> it's almost always star. And I do want to see these quarterbacks. Did we give the Packers their guy? 76 overall. Morris, he is hidden development trait. He's pretty damn accurate with a very strong arm. Number 12, very interesting number there. Kind of feel like that doesn't happen. Number 10, why not again? Do it again. Star Dev, so, I mean, that's not a bad trade for us because they get a good quarterback, but he was star. Who knows? Maybe they get Wilbur instead if uh, we don't allow the trade. Royster guaranteeing that Star Dev, and even if he isn't, I don't really care too much. Just a random corner. Carry the hidden dev quarterback. I mean, this was a really good quarterback class. Okay, I mean, we knew it was good, but it's actually really good. Star Dev for Carry. And then we took the very next quarterback, right? Wilbur. Uh, I do want to see Mobley, 74 overall. Okay, another hidden. Uh, I mean, 
Very elite quarterback class so far. Take a look at his dev. Superstar as well. So the two main guys that we were kind of looking at were both superstar. I mean, I was looking at uh, Morris, kind of, and then Kerry was my guy. But then I seen that the the talent grades weren't great, which, I mean, you guys can see there is, they're really misleading because they're really talented. And they said two to three, which our guy was not round one talent versus two to three talent. They were like all the same pretty much. All right, Nate Davis, we're going to be trading off to the Giants, save some money, and I guess uh, grab a seventh-round pick. Why not? Season 2 team, great running back, really good receiving threats. There is no excuses. Even, oh, well, here's, here's the other excuse. The offensive line doesn't give Justin Fields 35 seconds to throw each time. It's not reading the field. That's a problem at all. Definitely not. D-line, I mean, it's young. There's still uh, some years left they need to uh, develop. But Meeks of the number one DT is... He has the highest upside. He already has really good power move. Uh, linebackers, Edwards plays for now, but Dempsey will probably take his spot next season. Stills will take uh, Jackson's spot next season. Actually, you know what? He's going to take it right now. I think Eddie Jackson's really good still, but as a backup, he could be even better, perhaps. Um, but yeah, we could use some dev ups. A star dev is great, but Superstar really helps that regression a ton. And once again, Fields short leash as we have a more than capable rookie quarterback that could really uh, benefit from being a starter early on. Get that XP going. We have re-signings and Justin Fields is having a pretty good year. I don't know what to do. I don't know. We just drafted a superstar development trade quarterback and we have a bunch of other names on our list that need to develop. And as much as I like Braxton Jones, he's a decent overall, the money he's asking for for the nine sacks allowed just doesn't really align. So I think we're going to let him go. Uh, and I think, I mean, I kind of have no choice but to re-sign Justin Fields. If I could do like a three-year deal instead, like he's playing really well this season. Uh, you know, his best season yet, technically. And I changed the scheme a couple of times just to make sure that it wasn't just, oh, it was the Chiefs. Do I just give him the five-year deal and we just have a superstar dev quarterback that we trade for, like, really high value next season? I don't know. I really don't know. A uh, five-year 160, it is what it is. We're 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 in it now. But in fairness, one thing that is good is anyone that, you know, wants to cry about, oh, it's scripted, you know, he's expecting to win at this point or that point or, you know, this and that. I mean, I'm just going to link this video because I drafted a quarterback, picked nine overall, who is superstar Deb that is kind of looking like he's never going to get a chance to start for us. If that isn't the most unexpected random thing ever, I don't know what is. And what is crazy is these numbers, that touch on a pick ratio reminds me exactly of our Chicago Bears franchise, uh, our online franchise. Uh, Chubb, pretty good. Not great, but it's just what's going to happen. DJ Moore, pretty good. Cole Komet, obviously really good in that Chiefs scheme. Marvin Harrison Jr., not great. Scott, decent, considering he's supposed to be the number three. Braxton Jones, of course, doesn't allow another Zach for five or six weeks. So it's like, maybe I should have resigned him. Thank you. Love it. D-line, Sweat killed it. Meeks was pretty good. Carter was okay. And then Isaac was really bad. Uh, Jalen Johnson, not bad. Elliott was pretty mid. Gill was okay. Steele should not have been on the kick return game, but he was. And the league MVP goes to Tua. We weren't even on the list, which is surprising. I know the interceptions are a little high, but still surprising. Any rookie award wins? Uh, quarterback for the Vikings. No one on defense for us. Meeks was kind of high. Fields at four. Chubb at 2, wide receiver at 8, O-line at 3, D-line at 4, uh, nobody at linebacker, DB at number 10, and then kicker obviously not on the list, but in the playoffs at 12-5. and five. As much as you guys know, I don't like to use uh, the good playbooks until like really close to the end of the rebuild. I had to give Justin Fields a fair shake, and with that fair shake, he actually played pretty well. And, you know, last season, you know, we ran with the Chiefs playbook kind of near the end, and he wasn't playing that well, which is why we went with a QB. I was like, okay, the Chiefs playbook isn't even saving him, but no, nah, it ended up saving him. It ended up saving him. Could it be a dynasty-type realistic style rebuild? We've been, uh, you know, in the realistic style rebuilds at least, not always winning an, uh, at least even a Super Bowl, let alone multiple. So uh, it'd be nice to finally get one, especially with a team that we weren't expected to do that well with. It's a very close game, but the Eagles kind of have the upper hand now. Team is competing, though, so it's it's not over. Got to kick the field goal here, and they do kick it. Let's see what we get. Uh, down by four, but with ball, 
Really short field, and we will be up three. Sometimes kicking that field goal is the smart move. The Bears' defense, the monsters of the midway, even though the yard, you know, the touchdowns and you know points were pretty high, could be back. Taking the ball away. Very close game between the two quarterbacks, and Chubb was pretty good on the ground. Cole Kmet killed it. DJ Moore was decent. AJ Brown was pretty good. Marvin Harrison with two touchdowns is great. Sacks. It's one thing I do worry about is this defense not being able to get to the quarterback seems to be a problem. But we did get all of our other signings in, like Jaquan Brisker and DJ Moore, and there's probably someone else and I completely forgot. I forgot about the run support. Oh, the wasted zone coverage. Brisker. But either way, divisional round going to be against, uh, let's see, the Commanders. Okay, interesting. I think it was another team that might have taken a QB, right? Was it? I can't remember what they took. Maybe not. Maybe not. I can't remember. All right, we had some pretty good off seasons. Did we have a good enough one to win a Super Bowl, though? As we're in a pretty good spot in the divisional round, but the Commanders are kind of taking it to us right now as we have scored zero points in the first half, and we're lucky to get out down 14. A huge touchdown drive. It's a little early to be slow simming, but we're doing it anyways. Uh, and we do see the touchdown with the extra point. No stop. We get the stop, and they miss the field goal. Ten minutes left, and the team's in a good spot. Fourth and four. There's no way I punt this, especially if you think, okay, I believe in my defense. Okay, believe in them to get the stop again then. Why Why? Why do they? Why do you have the punt? They kick a field goal. You're still only down a certain bit. That was about as free as anyone could ever ask for. First down, fields. Oh, my God. We're running that Chiefs playbook, so there's no excuses. We are all the way back. Can he hit this? Wait, why are we not? Is it too far of a kick? 60 yards is a lot, but is it the wind? Wait, why are we kicking this? Why are we kicking this? Tell me he hits this. Way to go, yay! Got to kick it with the leg. Won't kick it from 60 out. Why wouldn't you try that? The like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be playing in the playoffs and it's that deep, six minutes left, you might as well. You might as well. If they're down, if they're up already by a seven, maybe because you don't want to give them the field goal win. Fourth and one. Do they get the stop? That could be game. Wait, what's wait? We have the ball. Okay. Fair enough. Overtime, 17 all. Maybe they miss another field goal. Fourth and three. Now this, this play is up for interpretation. This one, I don't know if it's the smart reason to go for it, but our defense has been pretty iffy. They made it easy on us last time, but this time it looks a little bit tougher. DJ Moore. Fields hits it. DJ Moore. Going for more. Slipping all the way to the 22. Almost doubling his passing yards on the spot. Can they punch it in or are they going to go backwards over 45 yards again? And they do. A stop wins the game. A stop wins the game. Fourth and goal from the three. I don't want to play this myself. I mean, you can't really give them time, right? Can you really run man coverage here? Who do I use her? Who's the worst? Carter's not that great. Is he wearing number 22? Stupid glitched draft classes again. And a terrible throw leads to the loss. Oh, yeah, they have Caleb Williams. I forgot. We gave them that pick. And we're headed to the championship round. Justin Fields with the mid-game of all mids. Wins the game. 50% completion percentage. Oh, my Lord. If the Bears fans saw that in real life in the playoffs, they'd be like, it's happening. It's happening again. Old Fields is back. Old Fields that can barely get over 150 passing yards is back. Oh, no. And then with the scheme, we don't even have the rushing yards anymore. It's like he's regressed. He's lost the ability to run, and he can't throw. Here it is. Championship round. Please don't be the Cowboys. The Niners. That's not much better, but it is technically better. 87 overall to their 89 overall. Our team's got some playmakers, though, so don't uh, don't count us out. Going to the end of the game, the Niners with a touchdown drive right out the gate. We get three. So at least it's something. Last try, last game, we didn't even have any points in the first half. They are now up eight. They are now up 11. Oh, come on, guys. That might be it. All right, fourth and 17. So we get the stop entering the fourth quarter. Down by 11. Still winnable. Huge play. Penalty saving us. Down by three. We need to stop. We need to stop. We need to stop. Wow, you can't win a game like that. You cannot win a game with the defense giving up like a seven-minute drive already losing right at the end of the game for a touchdown. 
You're going to stop at the end after all that. Okay, at least you gave him a chance. Oh, my lord, Marvin, I didn't even notice that either. You at least gave him a chance. DJ Moore. What a throw. Clutching up, first down. Oh, my God, Fields is so bad, though. Look at the numbers. If we want any chance, I, I have to play it out. There's just no other way around it. There's just no way this team is going to be able to do it on its own. They would easily run out of time before then. And I just love DJ Moore. He's just so good. You know, I don't cook with him as much as I probably should. Cole Komet. Holds on! I wish he would do that for me. Never holds on. Nah, we can't. We can't run it. Hike the ball. Fields rolling out. Really good uh, QB. Damn, good try by Fields. That clock is going to continue moving, though. Good QB spy. I, that might be one of the greatest QB spies I've ever seen, though. Like, that was kind of insane. Clock is running. Come on. Let me get to the line. And not going to get the ball off to Marvin. Literally free off the line. That's crazy. Marvin again. Do we trust the run? Let's screw it. No way this defense is that good. It's insane. And they're, they're going to make me manually go over to the field goal. Oh, my Lord. This is like the ultimate clock choke. We would look so incompetent if that was real life. I mean, even though we have the timeouts, you pretty much have to kick the onside anyways because we have just no clock. Right to him. It was at least kind of deep, so wow, what a hit. Uh, it's not going to lead to, uh, you know, a guaranteed field goal. Wait, what the hell? Wait, what the hell? The hell's going on? Get in there. Of course, we weren't ready for it, but that is... That is crazy. I just clicked a random play because I wasn't ready. I thought it was a field goal. So I just, you know, I clicked field goal block, whatever. I don't really care. Ugh. What a way to lose. Like, of course, it not only works, but the EA call is to run it on fourth and six. Oh, my lordy. Fields was ass, though. I mean, the yards are great, but two interceptions, like no touchdowns passing is just not going to cut it. And the Niners' defense is pretty good, in fairness, but I still just don't want to admit it. To the Super Bowl, please tell me the Niners at least win so we technically lost to the Super Bowl champions. Otherwise, I'm going to feel really bad. And the winner... The winner is the Bills, of course, so we were not even close to the second-best team in the league. We are frauds. Looking at DevOps, uh, Cole Komet goes up, and then the biggest one, obviously, Justin Fields, is an 82 overall superstar... Man, I'm glad our Chicago Bears franchise uh, fields is better. I keep, <laughs> keep saying Chicago Bears franchise instead of just saying our Bears franchise. Uh, Cole Komet, 82 speed. Uh, but he is superstar now, which is great. Uh, defensively, Sweat goes up and dead. I kind of feel like someone else did too, but I don't think they did. I think it was just Sweat, which is a real disappointment, to be honest. But at least he's an X-Factor now. 87 overall. Only 87 finesse as well, but... Couldn't really do much better, right? I mean, he got a dev up first season, got a dev up the next season. So it's about as good as we could have done to develop him. And uh, he is our number one uh, edge rusher for sure. Going into the offseason here, we're potentially losing a couple of players. We could afford the line. Maybe we even tag him perhaps because we do have money and I don't really want to just lose him just to lose him. Uh, Darnell Wright, if we're going to keep him long term, which I want to see if we actually do want to do anyways... You know, that pass block finesse is really bad. Like, he's he's okay, but I don't know. Braxton Jones, I think, is definitely a smart candidate for a, a one-year. So he was basically asking for, realistically, 15-plus. I'm not paying 25 for him. I am sorry, but I would rather reset at the position. Uh, punter was actually pretty good, but the kicker was not. Decent in the playoffs, but that doesn't really matter to me. I want everything to be decent, at least. Regular season was pretty garbage, but we have money. So 76 mil, not much to replace, but we have money. So if there's some free agents, maybe this is an even better season, but we'll have to see. Uh, we dropped one overall, but once again, we have a lot of potential here. Problem is the free agency class doesn't. Uh, Braden Smith, that's an expensive man, but he is a good player. Kind of want to take a look at how well he's played though. 12 sacks allowed. Okay. I mean, sure, I guess. The game is annoying. What can I tell you? The game is annoying. And I don't think, other than like Dexter Lawrence, who would impede the process potentially of Isaac, 
I don't think we would spend any money other than for the tackle. I don't. I don't want Batonio because he's a one-year guy. I want. I want someone that's going to be here for a couple of years at least. Well, instead of going to us on a two-year 41, he goes to the Raiders, who I'm sure were competing well, right? I'm sure they were great. Uh, I guess maybe I do sign Joel Batonio. Maybe uh, Joel Batonio tries his hand at tackle, perhaps. Don't think we're going to get him either. And he's still on the mend. Batonio still isn't signed. Okay, whatever. Um... Drafting to potentially replace tackle right out the gate. Don't know what our draft pick's going to look like, though. We should have a decent second round, though. 45, 61, 66. I mean, fair enough. We can make a trade up if we absolutely had to. All right, pick 29. We do have a couple of one to twos, but uh, there's no real position other than tackle that like we must grab like right now. Uh, and obviously, O line I can get later. There is a couple of decent top uh, and linemen though. So if they're you know if they're there. Maybe I take him, like Gil Williams, for one. Uh, Barkley, we definitely want. Obviously, I scouted him further. He's one to two, even. Uh, and do we really need corner? Because this guy is busted. Tyler Matthews looks like a goat. Um, I think I take Tyler Matthews, and I trade up for that guard as well. I'm taking Tyler Matthews. Super speedy, hidden dev. He just looked like a can't miss. And that's, uh, well, I mean, it seems like that's what the case was. We trade up using 45 and 66 to get to 30, which is going to be the offensive lineman. Uh, we still have pick 29 as well, so we can take Barkley if this guy does suck. I will say, though, if he sucks, I'm never taking a high lineman again. Gil Williams looks great, though. 39 bench press reps, 2 A radians, 2 B radians. Please, thank you. Hidden development trait looks good to me. I thought he'd be stronger than that, though. 39 reps is only 91 strength, apparently. Don't know who's playing tackle, because Barkley looks pretty good, too. I might even take Barkley, like, right now. You know, 1-2 grade. Has the same kind of ratings as the guy we traded up for. Uh, and then the rest is, like, all DTs, really. So, some pretty good linemen in this class, it seems. And another hidden with really good strength. 29. Uh, I mean, I don't want a DT, necessarily. But I wouldn't hate it, either, because Carter hasn't been great. So, man, they are really raw, though. I think I wait until it's Bowers, Reeves, Horton. Probably Bowers or Reeves. All right, we trade up with a 6th and a 7th to move up 6 spots at the Cowboys as uh, the DTs were still there. I'm kind of thinking I'm just going to take both at this rate. I might as well as I don't have anything in the 4th round, so we trade a 4th next year and we kind of get that done. Bowers, really strong, but he is 22, so we'll see. And he's hidden. That's, that's a good pick. I might even take him as a starter. As our uh, current DT Carter really isn't the best. And yeah, I know I'm rhyming. That is what it is. Uh, you didn't know I had that kind of talent, I know. We have to get rid of a little bit for next year, but overall it's a fine trade. DT set for life? Is DT set for life? We already have so many DTs as well. So we really don't even need this guy. But uh, you know what? Maybe... You know what? I think I just talked myself out of it. I'm going to go with Dan Beach. Probably don't need a lineman either, but I need a lineman more than DT. And I do want to see how good, though, our, uh, you know, the DT would have been. I'm going to have to take a look at him. Let's, uh, let's see. Surely he goes soon enough. There you go. The Steelers. All right. Pretty good draft. What were the overalls? Oh, I forgot we took the corner first. Don't get me wrong. 79 is great. I thought the lineman was generational. Tyler Matthews is great, though, and our corners are solid. We did lose Kyler Gordon this offseason, didn't we? I don't know, but let's take a look at Matthews' dev. Star, I usually do see that in fairness. Let's, uh, let's put in something in the 20s, 26, sure, whatever, who cares. Uh, and then Williams and Barkley. I don't know who's better, but whoever is going to be playing left tackle. Williams was a higher draft pick, so maybe he'd make more sense there. Although his finesse blocking kind of sucks. Decently balanced, though. Let's take a look at the dev. Let's see what we uh, are cooking here. He is star. I struggle so much to get superstar linemen. That's why I just don't like drafting in the first round because it's like I take that extra risk, you know, spending a higher pick on a guard in the first round, and he's not even superstar anyways. And then the and then the guard is. Oh, my God, bro. I mean, I'll take it, but really? Really? Bowers, finesse move at 78. Maybe he's the guy at DT2 as Carter's kind of struggled. Uh, star dev, nothing crazy going on there. And then... I suppose Beach. Now yeah, we'll we'll just wait until the uh, you know when he reveals himself later. Reeves also hidden. 
78 finesse as well. Be kind of disappointing if he's superstar. He is star. So another good DT, but uh, yeah, star dev. We're trade off Birch to the Vikings, helping them out one trade at a time, but I don't care. I just want, I did the trade finder. They offered us better than that. I didn't feel like it was fair. So I was like, okay, well, they're the team that's interested. I trade that off to the same team, but for something else. And boom, there. that's how you get the trade. Season three, the team is, it's in a decent spot. Joel Batonio apparently signed with us. So he's now playing left tackle as he's our best player in general. But man, it's a weird one because Fields is 27 years old now. 11k XP per hour upgrade isn't terrible, but I mean, what's his ceiling? 88, 89 overall at the very best. Uh, and then obviously Nick Chubb keeps going down and well, I, I don't know if I feel like Henry's the guy going forward. We'll see. Uh, and then obviously looking at the defensive side of things, our D-line really hasn't been developing like at all. It's taken a long time. Corners, they're okay. Safety's okay. Linebackers are in a pretty good spot right now, but I'm honestly as surprised we got as far as we did last season. Really, that's that's what I'm kind of thinking. And I could see a major regression season for us, which would really put us in like a, well, what now kind of situation because we're not really developing despite the fact that we're young. 72 million? I mean, at some point, right? Surely the money is going to become such a problem for re-signings. But I will say, as of right now, it does not seem to be the case. I will say, though, also that uh, Fields was a pretty fair contract for us. So at the end of the day, it wasn't like we paid that much for him. Uh, Edmonds is in a weird spot because he isn't superstar. This is good money if he becomes superstar. If not, we might be paying him quite a bit on those final two years for being like kind of a mid overall. And then right, uh, once again, that was ratings. How much is it based on overall? We kind of seen that it's like it is a little bit more overall than actual ratings. Uh, I don't know, dude. That's a lot of money for a tackle that's not really playing that well. Do I just replace him as well? Maybe? Should have done that fifth-year option. Not our best effort, but win and potentially in. Not the case. Nine and eight. The Packers steal the division. And it's starting to kick us in the, uh, the tuck uh, that Morris is a Packer. Because, uh, yeah, he led the league in yards, and they made the playoffs, and I'm sad. How we regressed, I don't know. But like I said, I was looking at the team, and I was kind of feeling a regression coming. I was feeling it. Then again, I also didn't feel like we should have been as good as we were last year, so it was kind of inevitable anyways. But, uh, you know, field 34 to 11, not as good as last year, but still good. Uh, and then Chubb better than last year, which is nice to see because he should be worse. Cole Komet was decent. DJ Moore was decent. Scott was better than Harrison again. I don't know what's going on. This spread offense is not working out for us. Joel Batonia left tackle was terrible. Right's gone anyways. Uh, D-line, Isaac still sucks. Sweat was useless. What are these sim numbers, bro? Oh, my. Yeah, this is just a bad season for like 95% of the roster. Quick look at the award wins. We're not going to win any, though. Nick Chubb, best running back, actually. Uh, good yards per carry and all that makes sense. But, ugh. Would this be the Bills' third straight? Would this be their third straight win? I think it might be. Uh, we can actually look through league history. There's no way they just won three in a row. One, two. Okay, it was two. Still, two in a row is still something. DevOps, maybe Cole Komet again. But I don't think anyone else on offense. Uh, and it was Cole Komet, who is now an 88 overall X Factor. My man's has taken the next step. He's he's pretty good. And he got a speed upgrade, apparently. And then we look at the defensive side of things. Really? I mean, maybe Brisker, because I didn't really pay attention too much. But Matthews might have also, like, got Kool-Aid trade off or traded off. Uh, but dev up for Brisker, dev up for Matthews, dev up for both the DTs somehow. I'm not really sure how, but apparently they're good enough to be debbed up. Kool-Aid, I think, is damn near a first-round pick. Maybe a high second round, which, honestly, other than, like, future-proofing, maybe edge. I, I don't really know what else we could really use. Maybe we trade up hardcore for an edge rusher. We trade Isaac, uh, Kool-Aid, a first and a second to get, like, a proven, like, edge rusher or, like, a high draft pick to grab one. Because Matthews went up in dev, and his ceiling is... Much higher than uh, McKinstry already. All of our money is returned somehow. Marvin Harrison, obviously the fifth-year option. McKinstry, obviously not, as we're going to be uh, trading him off. Even though he's good, it's just, do I need three elite corners? Probably not. 
whereas McKinstry could go for a lot. Like he's a first round pick on his own, I'd say. Uh, if we're going to go with Darnell Wright, it's going to be like a one-year type of deal. So let's see what that uh, fifth-year option looks like. Or the tag. 26 mil can't do that. So we have some money left over, but we also are needing to replace another tackle. Free agents, A.J. Brown. Interesting name, but don't need a wide receiver. Tyreek Hill, interesting name. Don't need a wide receiver. Rashi Rice, interesting name. Don't need a wide receiver. Marcus Williams could potentially use that position. Aaron Donald, the edge rush. Can we play him on the edge? Give him a chance to be an edge rusher. That could be crazy. That could be crazy. I don't know if he would join us, but maybe. Uh, Stanley's a one-year type of guy. It'd be nice to save some money, though, like have it roll over. But I don't know if I would say we're ready to win now, but I mean, now would be a good time as ever. We did not get Aaron Donald, but we got Ronnie Stanley and the kicker, Aubrey Where's our money? Does it come back? Like, when when does it come back? I, I kind of need my money to come back. 51 mil. We're going to be trying to make a trade for some sort of uh, pass rusher. And we're giving up some pretty youthful players. So I don't want to hear it if it's, like, actually a pretty good, like, young name. But let's be honest, it's probably going to be somewhere along the lines of, like, a Rashawn Gary, a Brian Burns type. Because any kind of younger, better players would basically be untradeable. And I can't even really say younger because... At this point, it's that deep into this rebuild that Micah Parsons is 28. All right, here we go. McKinstry, Isaac, a second this, a third this, a fifth this, and a fifth two years from now for 30-year-old X-Factor Josh Allen. Pick 18, which will more than likely be used on a trade down. I'm going to be paying attention to who's there, though, uh, as we did have a couple of kind of higher names, but probably not going to be taking them. Thurman, the running back, he was on my list, but uh, I doubt I'd take a running back this high. Very good speed and, you know, decent juke ability, but yeah, I'm not going to do that. I looked at all the running backs because we are going to need a running back soon. Tight end, I don't know if we really need one, but there's some decent looking tight ends there. Did I have my outside? Ooh, I don't really need edge rusher right now, but Blaylock, pretty good athleticism. Didn't get to scout him further because I didn't expect him to be there, but you would assume either the finesse or the power move is at least halfway decent. I, oh man, him being there is not expected, but I think I need to trade down, right? Like, we need other players, like linebacker and uh, tight end, potentially. I think I try to trade for, like, a haul. If I can get two, like, high third slash late seconds, that would be my goal. The Raiders are actually kind of cooking up something here. I mean, we still get to keep a first-round pick. That is kind of wild. I think I have no choice but to take that, right? I, I get a second. I still get a first-round pick, which I still probably don't take. But it would be a really cool pick if they take Blaylock because he looked really good. And they take the safety. Never mind. I mean, I got to take a look. If Blaylock's still there, I got to take him just on pure, like, athleticism alone. I highly doubt it, though. Yeah, he's gone. Uh, let's go to the next round. Let's trade this down and go to the next round. And the Saints are kind of giving me a decent trade. I get a first round next year, and I get a third this year. So I'm chilling. I'm taking that trade. Um, I'm happy with it. Who do they end up taking? They take Portis at ET. Let's move on to 28 in the second, which is where I think we'll be taking... I don't know if I take a tight end. A couple of tight ends went right there. But tight end or the uh, linebacker position, I don't know who the best is, but... Eppard looks pretty good, right? B tackle, B blah, block shed with at least a C zone. 22 years old. It's a future proof position, but he looks really athletic. I'm taking him. And a normal dev. Yikes. We trade a six round pick to move up three spots of the Ravens as the Giants took Spencer Dillon. We're going to be taking the other player. I don't think either tight end was even really all that athletic, but they're both pretty good ratings wise, and that's kind of what matters. 6'6. Six, six. I know he was pretty decent. Uh, he's Excel, literally decent. Seth Rogen, I didn't even notice the name, by the way. Uh, hidden development trait, though, 85 speed, 85 Excel. I'm curious to see what the Giants guy was like. Both look pretty good, so it wouldn't surprise me if both were hidden. Maybe even both superstar, who knows. But uh, remember that one draft, there was three X-Factors, and I missed all three. I might actually trade up for... I kind of want the linebacker, but Nelson might be needed more. Trucking sucks, but he's good at elusiveness. Usually don't see those types of backs. I'm going to try to trade up with the, the Eagles here, I think. We end up trading uh, Nelson in a fourth next year for this third-round pick from the Eagles, which I think is a fair trade for them. They needed a right tackle, it said. It's their fourth-highest need, so uh, 
That's fair on both sides, I think. Edward Nelson, speedy back. Normally, it's the trucking backs we get. And unfortunately, normal. Not a good trade-up. I was going to try to trade these two DTs off, and holy crap, are the Niners broke. The Jaguars take the trade, though. Which, how far away are we? Oh, my. We're going to lose the linebacker, aren't we? Oh, no. Don't do it. Nice. They're still there. Or he's still there. It's not there. There's only one left. Uh, Josiah Graff, 22 years old, B-zone, fast as hell, also normal. Who let this guy cook? Who did it? We kind of need special teamers, actually. I'd be willing to take a six-rounder if they're good. I don't really care, but I do not know. I didn't really scout that position for, like, the 40th time in a row. Uh, Joe Steffens is the best kicker there is. <laughs> That's not saying much, as he only has good kick power. 93, I think he might be our starter. Gotta be honest, the actual draft itself, the importance... Not very high, right? Not very high. We were drafting just for for depth for the most part. But uh, Eppard was a really good overall. Was he normal? Yeah, he was. But still, not bad. We're number 10. Very bad. He's actually a really good player. I mean, the jumping's good. The catching's good. I mean, the, the tackle's insanely good. I think he sits at middle linebacker number one. And it is taking a lot out of me to not just put him at 54. I'm going to be honest, but... We'll put him at 45, I suppose. It's the opposite of that, believe it or not. Uh, and then the running back's pretty decent overall. The tight end, I'm kind of curious to see the Giants tight end because, you know, they landed one as well. Uh, not bad. Like a faster Cole Komet. Actually, not as tall, but even a remote. Was he 6'5"? I don't know. But Dev, star Dev, still a good player. He's a backup. It is what it is. What do you want? 86 overall. Let's take a look at what the Giants tight end look like. Obviously, we just let it happen. Whoever was first was first and then we would grab the next one slower but also uh six six really like cole Komet. very same uh you know similar speed and all that what's his dev it is also star so good but ours is slightly better season four squad uh we're in a spot we're in a spot like because this is probably the best we're gonna get uh because chubb is gonna be gone and he's already only in 89 overall he's regressing hard we're gonna lose stanley and obviously we're you know free agency's kind of losing that abundance of good veteran linemen so that could be a problem as well and cole Komet's 28 so he's not gonna be that great for that much longer uh sweat and allen might go down even though this is our first season with allen yeah i mean it's a good team 88 overall is pretty good. Maybe we get to 90 plus, but I just worry about Chubb. Chubb is the uh, the biggest thing to worry about. <laughs> Big Chubb. 90 million. Cole Komet gets the contract. Sweat has no choice but to get the contract. Carter gets the contract. Chubb gets the retirement. Stanley maybe gets a re-signing. And... Wilbur already needs a fifth-year option. Oh, my God. Meeks, Wilbur, uh, maybe you get the fifth-year option for Wilbur just to make sure that Fields is still the guy and then, I don't know, trade him off or something. Take a little bit of the hit, but still you get very good comp for it, I'd imagine. Four-year 60 is not enough, apparently, for Cole Komet. I'll get this done in the behind the scenes, but yeah, I mean, I don't want to really lock in too long for Sweat. A two-year deal, I think, is fine. And Carter might be the full seven-year whack. I don't know, he's not really played well, but... At 24 years old, he's got 89 finesse. Well, it definitely helps the conversation as Justin Fields is now an X-Factor. Uh, we're in no matter what, but it was not a great season. 10-7, and seven, uh, it was a really bad start. Finished out strong, and Fields ended up with the number one yards, which is really impressive. Could it be the year? I mean, this is a really bad start, but I was like, I'm just going to let the numbers play it out, and it was okay. It wasn't terrible. Um, but let's take a look at D stats and awards. Uh, once again, Justin Fields, number one in yards, uh, 43 touchdowns. I mean, I'm glad we stuck it out with him, even though we did draft a quarterback nine overall. Harrison, we finally got the lineup right. Well, I guess DJ Moore got screwed. I just want it to be Harrison, DJ Moore, Cole Komet, then Scott. But whatever works. Whatever gets us to the playoffs. O-line, I mean, I'm glad we're paying these really good veteran tackles to suck. Allen was great, though. Sweat at 9 is okay. DTs were decent. They're okay. Uh, Jalen Johnson with interception of 3. Uh, somehow, Trent Gell's the kicker, even though I paid Aubrey. Okay, I wonder if we would have been better if we would have actually had the right kicker in. But uh, potential MVP from Fields, not great with the picks. But number 4, Gleason wins it. Okay, I don't even know who the hell that is. Josh Allen, Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, any other awards? Best linebacker, D lineman, anyways. 
it wasn't a pretty way to the playoffs, and we have to play the freaking Cowboys, but once again, all you got to do is get in, and anything can happen. Go to the end of the game. Dallas, team that if you can beat... Oh, we missed an extra point. Team you can beat, you feel good about your chances. We're up by six, should be up by seven. Instead, it's only a one-point game. We get the two-point there, so everything is all squared. One more score could do it. Up ten. We get the stop. The defense does enough. 31 to 28. We're moving on. I know that was early in the playoff cycle, but once again, it's the Cowboys. Cowboys and Sim are basically like the holy grail of Sim teams. So beating them means, I mean, we're probably by far the team to beat. You missed an extra point and a field goal. Division around. Who is it? The Falcons. They've done some pretty good things in Sim as well, though. 89 overall on top of it. They got an X-Factor running back, Groves. Is that Groves or Gloves? End of the game. Of course, we give up a touchdown right out the gate. We do get one back, though. There we go. Good stop. Field goal or a touchdown. They get a touchdown. A lot of touchdowns, though. Four half. We run out of time. Up by a touchdown. Up by two touchdowns. Could be the game with the stop. It will be 34 to 4, 35 to 14, 35 to 3, 21, actually. And we're headed to the championship round. I don't know if is that the furthest we've gotten. No, we we got we lost to the Niners. Uh, Fields crushed it. Rushing numbers pretty good. All it takes is just to have a really damn good running back, huh? Uh, kicking, they missed one this time. We didn't miss one. Finally, we had a good game. The championship round. Let's see it. The Cardinal. If we lose to the Cardinals, bro, please, EA, don't do it to me. Don't do it to me. Go to the end of the game against the Cardinals. Don't let the freaking Cardinals do it, dude. There we go. 10 to 0. We don't mind it. Halftime. That could be... Oh, it's a, not a touchdown. Okay, it's got to be over right now, right? They finally score a point. Wow, huge touchdown as well. That was easy. 28 to 7. Easy clap. Fields had a pretty good game. Uh, you know, Cole Komet was the number one guy for yards and touch their catches and all that. And a clean kicking game. So, Super Bowl bound. And I believe it was against the Jaguars, if I'm not mistaken. And it is. Okay. Uh, I don't know why I wanted to look at that. I want to look at our DevOps. If we had any. I'm trying to think of who it may have been. Uh, someone feels new to the X-Factor gang. Maybe not. Maybe it's just because I haven't looked at Fields. But he got X-Factor from Breakout, obviously. Uh, defensively, no one. So just no dev ups at all. Not even freaking Tremaine Edmonds still. But you know what? Our team's already pretty damn good. But are we good enough? 91 overall to the 89 overall Jaguars, who now have Tyree Kill and AJ Brown. <laughs> Bro, that's not even fair. Like, give me one good reason why they should be able to sign both guys in one free agent period. Like, how did nobody else take them? All right, what a super riveting Super Bowl. Although now here it is. Huge rushing touchdown, saved, up by seven. It looks like it's their ball, and of course, on third and 19, they get it to A.J. Brown for 22. I mean, that's destiny. Oh, we got the stop. I was going to say that's destiny for them to win, and then we throw a pick because Justin Fields does what he does, and then they turn it over. The worst Super Bowl of all time, and we win it 14-7. to seven. That is, like, hands down the worst Super Bowl I've ever seen. Like, the, no scoring in the first half, and it ends up with 21 total points. And it's going to be one of those Super Bowls like, oh, well, you don't like defense. Like, no, they were sloppy. It's just like the Patriots versus Rams. It wasn't just good defense. It was also bad offense, bad quarterbacking at times. Um, but, yeah, that's uh, going to be the win, I suppose. <laughs> Feels lackluster because it was such a bad uh, Super Bowl. But, hey, a Super Bowl win is a Super Bowl win, if you ask me. And... I think you did, all right? I think you did. Justin Fields, the chances of him being a Super Bowl winner here were so low. We drafted a quarterback. You know, if he played badly in that stretch, he was going to get replaced on the spot, and that quarterback happened to be a superstar. And instead, that quarterback, sitting as a backup, wasting away, if you will, uh, Fields was so ass to 80 yards, and he wins a Super Bowl, two interceptions. That is the most Justin Fields Chicago Bears rebuild I have ever seen. That is insane. Uh, Sweat with a sack, Edmonds with a sack, interceptions for Johnson, Reynolds, and Campbell. Uh, they got one kick blocked, which kind of maybe played a factor. I don't know. But one Super Bowl victory 
for one Chicago Bears. What actually was the yardage in that game? It was so low. 313 to 250, it's still pretty high, I suppose, but <laughs> touchdowns and the interception and the yardage for fields at least, garbage. But let's take a look at our team as we head out of this rebuild. Unbelievable, unbelievable. So we ended up going and sticking with fields. Then we replaced him but didn't actually start the guy. This is how fields were, you know, finished with uh, X Factor. Also got Gambit, just like uh, our uh, Justin Fields in the Bears franchise. Got Bulldozer, just like our Justin Fields. But those, I believe, are just kind of randomized. But, yeah, I mean, I felt like uh, maybe we made a mistake not going for Caleb Williams. But I went with the more realistic thing. I just kind of feel like the Bears aren't going to go QB. I, I just don't think they will. But who absolutely knows? Marvin Harrison, look at those ratings. That is crazy good. DJ Moore, uh, 92 overall. He's at a you know pretty good peak here, 30 years old. Really good route running. Short route's a little iffy, but super fast, super good. Just a great player. Let's take a look at Tyler Scott now. Never got up in dev, but 83 overall. A little surprised he didn't get to star this season. Pretty bad release, but decent short route running. You know, pretty damn good catching traffic. Weird player, right? Because regular catching sucks, release sucks, but his short route's great. and He's got some weird ratings. Don't want to look at Chubb. We already take the... <laughs> Don't look at that chub. Took a look at him recently, and he's just getting worse and worse, obviously. Cole Komet, very good at catching, pretty good route running, but obviously the lack of speed is a problem. It is a problem. O-line, we actually lost some of the real-life Bears players because we just felt like it was too expensive, and I think I was right. Tevin Jenkins, pass block finesse really isn't good, and regular pass block's not great, but everything else is actually truly elite. Uh, and then we don't care too much about the other CPU kind of generated O-line. Tremaine Edmonds in our Bears franchise, speaking of, uh, we actually have him just as good as this, if not better. Uh, and he's younger, obviously. Uh, then we go over to Peterson, 87 overall. little surprised to see him that high of an overall. Great block shed, pretty good zone coverage. Must be run, yeah. Run stopper is, once again, a poor man's field general, which is really good for upgrading players, obviously. Dempsey, same year as the other linebacker, but definitely not getting up as quick. Very athletic, really good block shed, iffy zone coverage, though. Then we move on to the safeties. Don't know what Stills looks like, but Brisker, I imagine, still going to be pretty low zone coverage. 87-man, 80 zone for Stills, basically a cornerback, of course. Uh, and then we move over to Brisker, who's a superstar. 89 overall, 28-year-old with 83 zone. His zone went up a little bit, though. It definitely went up a little bit. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Jalen Johnson, 94 overall, but never got to superstar, which is a pain. 88 man, 99 zone, insane zone coverage. Uh, then we move over to Matthews, 86 overall already, and he's only 22 going on 23 here. Unbelievable, very good man coverage. McKinstry being traded sucked, but it worked out because Allen was amazing, and then obviously we didn't really need McKinstry as Matthews already just as good as him. Uh, Josh Allen, great finesse, you know, not the fastest in the world, but he is a uh, good player and obviously had a 17-sack season, which was massive as Sweat was a little bit of a down year again. 90 finesse, very fast, obviously, but didn't really get a whole lot of great seasons out of him. We had like one and a half seasons that were good. Meeks, the DTs, they weren't even that good, but Meeks is really good ratings-wise, just... And I don't know what it is. EA just doesn't like, uh, you know, CPU-generated players most of the time. And then Carter with 91 finesse, he was great too. But that's pretty much going to be it. If you guys enjoy this one, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, I do appreciate good heat support on the channel. Maybe follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care. Second channel, Picare Plays for non-matting content. I think tomorrow we'll do uh, a playoff prediction video for sure. And then maybe Spider-Man 2 on the second channel. We'll see. And then a bunch of videos on the weekend. That's about it, though. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, you guys come back for next video. But until next video, 